start, Pete, I'll start first of all with the player situation because this is the tricky bit with most clubs trying to work out what you can do with the players and whether they will take a cut or a deferral. Well, we've been um, obviously monitoring the Football League position and the conversations and discussions with the PFA. And I thought it was very important not to go to my players, although I'd been keeping people in, involved in, in how things were progressing, um, before there was some kind of agreement. Um, uh, they did reach some agreement uh, at the end of last week, um, which allowed our as clubs to talk to players about a 25% deferral uh, for the month of April. Um, we are one of those clubs that have taken that up. Uh, we discussed that with our players. Um, and I'm, I'm thrilled to be able to tell you, Jeff, that 100% of our players um, have shown solidarity with every other employee at Stadium MK who have also, well, they haven't taken deferrals, they've taken cuts. Um, and it means that everybody in April will earn 80% of what they should have been earning, um, obviously with the support of the government up to 2,500. Um, and uh, all of our players have agreed to take the deferral. Now, I actually believe that deferrals are okay in the players instance because obviously with my employees, they're taking a cut forever. Um, but, you know, there's, there's hopefully months, years ahead for them to be able to do something about that and for us to be able to do something about that. Um, but I think the players, um, some of the players, of course, have got weeks left on their contracts. So these are really big things that they're having to think about. And I think sometimes we put too much pressure on the players um, about they've got to do this and they've got to do that. You know, we all signed contracts. Uh, we all did that with our eyes open. And whilst it's absolutely not our fault what's happened, it's absolutely not the players' fault either. Um, so I'm, as I say, I'm thrilled to be able to tell you that Stadium MK completely staff players have all taken some pain to ensure that there's some sort of fairness throughout the entire business in terms of trying to keep people going through this time. So that's why I was pleased to talk to you today, Jeff, because um, you know, I, I think that is um, a fantastic sign uh, of, of a strong business. And we have a tremendous uh, business bank um, that under, understand the underlying strength of the, of the core business. Uh, and I know everybody is, is in support of what we're trying to do that gives us some sort of medium term uh, potential. I mean, however long this goes on for, nobody can know. So I can never say that everything's going to be okay because I really don't know. But what I can say is everything is okay at the moment and everybody in our business, every over 700 people in our business have come together to take some pain, to help the company and themselves get through it. And our players have played a complete role in that as well. And I'm so grateful and proud of them. So that's for April, Pete. What's, yes. What about after that? What's kind of a bit more longer term? Well, well I, think, I think we need to talk to everybody again in May. Um, as I say, I think we can't go more than a month at a time at the moment. The government keeps talking about these three-week periods. We have to wait until they're up. Everybody has their opinions on, you know, whether we, the lockdown should end, whether we should go back to football or not, what should happen with the cities and all of the things that everybody's debating. Um, but I think the key in all of it is, is time. And, and is it go, you know, are we going to be able to start to relax the lockdown in May and maybe get to be able to play football behind closed doors in June, in which case that would seem a really interesting and logical thing to do to, 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 to get the country going again and to build up into next season because, you know, we've never had an interrupted season like this before. But if we're still locked down at the end of June, you know, are you then going to uh, damage next season's chance by keeping to play? So I think time is really important. And I think other countries' experiences are going to be important in that as well. Um, so what journey are doing at the moment you know we're all we're all going to watch that and, and if they pull that off behind closed doors and it works I think there'll be huge pressure on the Premier League and then ultimately uh, on the clubs as it comes down the pyramid to be able to do something but it's all about time it's all about safety it's all about testing it's all about all of those things that are relevant to every other sector of our economy uh, and, and everybody else's lives uh, and as I say you know sometimes we put football in a different world but when push came to shove and, and we needed everybody to come together as a business, as a place, as Milton Keynes Stadium MK, everybody that's there every day. When you see that kind of um, commitment from people, um, as I say, uh, it gives me a real boost. 
you know, if the season starts, bring it on. Um, if the season doesn't start, bring on next season because I think uh, as a business, we're going to be ready for it because this is unprecedented, this attack on, on everybody. And it is about the way you deal with it. As far as deferring is concerned, Pete, and we know that players' wages make up the majority of expenditure at football clubs, aren't you just then sort of shifting the, the, the burden on to maybe another month because you're still going to have to pay it eventually? I, 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 I totally accept that argument. Um, and, and obviously, it, it, it's something that's relevant to uh, so many employees in the business, let alone the footballers or let alone the football staff. Um, I think the players are in a slightly different position because they have a fixed term contract, which means that it's only ever up to a certain point. Um, this, again, might be relevant for playing the season longer and all that sort of thing. Normally, it's to June the 30th. And there is a month in July uh, when there's a settlement time when, when players can go to other clubs and, and then you take into account where they are. Um, it's a fail safe that happens in July every year. So um, I think that whilst, yes, you are kicking the can down the road, it is a massive thing from the players to unilaterally agree to allow you to stop some of their wages. Now, some of these wages might be the last they earn as professional footballers. It might be the most they earn as professional footballers. And for some lucky ones, it might not be relevant because they'll go on to bigger and better things in the future. But we've got to look at the fact that there are 1,400 players out of contract in the summer. And, and, and I think it is not fair to just uh, unilaterally cut people's wages and decide you're not going to pay them when you signed a contract for it. So I think there's a logic and that's why, Jeff, we're doing things as recommended by the EFL and the PFA. Let's do it a month at a time. Let's see where we are um, and let's do it in good faith. Let's do it together. And, and I think that that, that strength, uh, in that unity, there will be strength for both the players because the players need the clubs to go and play for and the clubs need the players to play the games. So we're all in this together. Um, and, and despite some of the things I read in the papers, I'm proud of what we've been able to do with the MK Dons at Stadium MK. In a general sense, Pete, how is the business shaping up with all that's going on? Well, like everybody, it's uh, terrible on the line. I mean, you know, we, we've, the stadium is actually closed, Jeff. Shut, completely shut. There's no, there's no trading at all from there. Obviously, there's people there, you know, making sure the building's okay. You know, we do sometimes hear the alarms that, 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 that Toby has great fun reporting on. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I mean, it's, um, it, it, it's, uh, it, it's, it's, it's so unreal. You know, the times I've been there myself and you drive around, the, I mean, it's unreal. The whole thing doesn't, doesn't make any sense at all. Um, however, um, that's where we are and that's where lots of businesses are. Now, for us, we have a very strong underlying business. We have a, the number one hotel in Milton Keynes. Uh, we have the arena where every major event um, in the area is, is, is in our stadium or the arena. And therefore, we're in a very strong position going forward. And I think, again, the quality of our business banking uh, allows us to rely in the medium term on that kind of strength, exactly as the government foresaw. And you have to very quickly, I don't normally make political statements, but I can see people all, you know, what happens this and wouldn't, shouldn't have done this. And as a country, the support that we got through the furlough scheme, which happened very early in the disaster, enabled me to sit, to be here proudly telling you that every single one of our employees is still earning money every month. Um, so I think there's been some remarkable decisions made that's left us in a position where I think in the medium term, we can see it through, Jeff. Um, I'm not in any uh, complete panic, although our cash flow is <laughs> it's in the toilet, you know, along with everybody else. Um, but I think it's how fast can we come back? How quickly can we get up to normal trading? You know, all of these questions we don't know. And that's why I don't want to sit here overconfidently. The world is in a complete mess. We all know that. But I do think that strong underlying businesses will be the first to come out of it. Um, and I think that, again, the... Uh, the fantastic solidarity uh, we've shown as a business, I think, is a great sign to, to anybody supporting us uh, that it's something worth supporting. So, as I say, I have, I have some confidence over the medium term. But, yes, the sooner it's over, the better. 
uh, and the sooner it's over, the quicker we can get back to football, um, the quicker you've got the chance for those finances to improve. And, you know, I, I don't think we should be spending money on transfer fees and, and other things if we've still got players' wages to pay. So I, and that's why I think as long as you get the chance to kick them down the road to a point where you might be able to pay them, uh, then, then, then actually that's the best you can ask for. Because at the moment it is about cash and it is about cash flow. And that's where a 25% deferral is a big, big help.